There is no terrible way to win. There is only winning. Let me drive. I won't make a fool out of you. Every one of us has to find a reason to do this. You do it because you're driven. I was beginning to think I'd never be anything more than a piston-happy, lead-foot punk. Then this starts to happen. Somebody put it in your mind you got to be perfect every time out or you're a failure. Well, forget that. Just forget it. You ready to put away your toys and grow up? Are you ready to make more money in one year than your father made in his whole life? Are you ready to become a real race car driver? When I won, it was probably the last time I ever felt pure victory. Because I'm quicker than all of you. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. But hell, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's being nice. No pressure. Nobody breathing down my back. Just driving because I love the pure. A lot of people go through life doing things badly. Racing is important to men who do it well. Racing in life. Anything that happened before or after, just waiting. I hope you do. Then I'm going to see it. Racing. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Winner, lose, clip, or show. Fine. And let's race. race. Welcome, one and all, to Trent Valley Kart Club. It's time to get the second round of the 2019 Winter Series underway. Jake Sanson, trackside here at PF International from the commentary box position overlooking the start finish line. Live on Downforce UK, both on Spreaker and on Facebook Live, and we are ready for action here at Trent Valley Car Club. It is said to be a really exciting battle in each of the individual categories of karting. Junior X30, Ayami Cadet, Junior Max, Mini X30, Mini Max and Junior TKM sharing a grid, Honda Cadet, Senior X30, Rotax Max, and Rotax 177. Plenty of great races from all up and down the length and breadth of Great Britain who want to come racing on what is the premier motor racing circuit kart in Great Britain. The only kart circuit at FIA grade international competition and it is an amazing spectacle for the youngsters and of course the adults who are racing here on the premier circuit in Great British karting getting ready for their 2019 motorsport season it's been a difficult start to the day thanks to the weather we were scheduled to start at practice 815 but mother nature took banner into the works and delayed us by a little over 90 minutes but we have had plenty of great practice sessions over the day and I'm delighted to tell you that while there is still some surface moisture around and there are still some tricky patches where it is a little bit damp, there is still a dry line, which is going to mean that all of the qualifying sessions are going to be bone dry in terms of conditions. Chat to us if you can. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, then of course, uh, do please feel free to do so. It is going to be a really exciting battle for all of the uh, competitors uh, out there on the circuit. And uh, we, of course, are live on Spreaker on the free application to download on your smartphones which is basically a uh, free application for everybody on Apple and Android. You can listen along with the coverage as it happens. Really exciting to wait as we continue with uh, what is set to be a really exciting tussle all the way through the day. We have live timing up in front of us as well for those who are watching along on uh, Facebook Live. So we are of course trying to uh, get ourselves underway for time qualifying and it is going to be an absolutely fantastic day of qualifying sessions with a little in total come. So it's going to be a really exciting call. So it is going to be an absolutely spectacular for the qualifying session. It looks as though our Facebook live stream is not quite coping well with the uh, weather conditions. So we will stick with the Spreaker application, uh, which of course is free to download on your Apple and Android devices. And you can listen along with the coverage as it happens. It's going to be a really exciting battle. And of course, in each of the individual categories, we have plenty of top talented contenders who are going to uh, make a bit of a splash out there on the circuit. There's a lot of great talent in Junior X30, particularly this weekend, with uh, some of the very best from the world of uh, British karting uh, taking to the circuit. A lot of drivers, of course, having stepped up from the Mini X30 category, and some who are basically taking their first journey in Junior X30 uh, of any kind. The practice sessions have come to an end. So the final uh, few drivers from Rotax Max 177 are heading out onto the circuit, which gives us, uh, heading off the circuit, I should say, which gives us an idea of who we're going to be talking about. So let's talk you through the drivers who are going to be on the starting grid 
for this Junior X30 contest. It will be uh, championship leader Joseph Taylor who won last time out. He set the qualifying record 58.27. He leads the Drivers' Championship at the moment from Georgia Dimitrov and Lucas Ellingham. Tom Edgar, Oliver Behrman and Oliver Gray were in the top six last time out from Alessandro Serranetti, Sam Heading, Dan Ginchard and Josh McLean. That was how they ran last time out and it is going to be a very interesting challenge for the competitors in Junior X30. Fastest qualifying lap from last time out was a 58.27. And of course, it was uh, Joseph Taylor, the young man from Medburn, who managed to get the job done last time to take the victory as well. So it will be a really exciting battle over the course. My apologies, Oliver Behrman was the one who got the fastest lap time uh, last time out, did a 58.07. Now, it is going to be tricky to tell whether or not a driver is going to get under that over the course of qualifying. There is a dry line, we are aware of that, but it is going to be tricky nevertheless. So let's talk you through the drivers who are going to be out there for their next challenge, which of course is going to be time qualifying here at Trent Valley Car Club. The drivers are about to head out onto the circuit for that time qualifying session. Six minutes on the clock and they head out, led out by the 2.18 of Zach Meekin. Alessandro Serenetti, Marcus Littlewood, Sam Shaw, Daryl Taylor, Carly Atkins, Archie Mace, Charlie Cole, Tyler Reed, Oliver Duffel, Alicia Barrett, Tom Levin, uh, Reese Newburn, Harry Cottrell, Scott Sumpton, Tom Edgar, TJ McDonnell, Oscar Joyce, Reggie Dewey, Joshua Torpy, Oren England, Joshua McLean, Blake Anglis, Alex Moody, Will Murdoch, Lucas Ellingham, Dan Butterworth, Charlie Rippin, Aston Millar, Charlotte Gaskin, Zach Meakin, Luke Barham, Harvey Charter and Will Orton. Those are the drivers heading out for time qualifying in Junior X30, and they are going to give us a spectacular show. It's very hard to know who is going to get the draw for pole position because all of the drivers want to get the job done nice and early on, but it is going to be very tight. The Junior X30 has seen a lot of talent come up from the mini class from the 2018 season, and we will see them really starting to put on a show here this weekend. Obviously, some of them were here last time out, at the January round of the championship on the first weekend just after New Year. A lot of them are racing for the first time in 2019. Some of them are racing for the first time at this level. So it's going to be a very interesting challenge that awaits the drivers out there who are going to want to put on a good show right from the off. For the record, the fastest driver around the circuit thus far is Zach Meekin. That is, of course, courtesy of the fact that he was the first one out there. No, it's now Reggie Dewey because he gave himself a little bit of breathing space. Yellow flags under the Litchfield Bridge. So clearly somebody has had an incident on their first flying lap. And we're waiting to see the yellow flags have now cleared. So it looks as though that was just a temporary glitch. And it looks like one of the fusion drivers. That might have been Joshua McLean, but I think it's just a spin. He doesn't look like he's got any damage. So he should be able to get himself back up to speed relatively quickly. The drivers are now out there on their flying laps. And of course, they'll want to get a really strong run uh, straight off the bat. So Reggie Dewey fastest at the moment from Alicia Barrett in second. Zach Meekin in third from Daryl Taylor in fourth. Across the line goes Zach Meekin. And he opens the gambit with a 62.10. Not a bad lap, but there's definitely time to find. Alessandro Serenetti goes second. Then Carly Atkins comes up to third. Moody goes second. Littlewood goes first now on a 61.77 in the spirit of Senna Machine. So he is there at the top spot. There are still drivers pounding around. Reggie Dewey comes out of the blocks with a 61.69. And that is a full eight hundredths of a second quicker than Marcus Littlewood. Lots of trains around the circuit already as the drivers are in a nice long queue as they start to jostle away and jockey for position. Some of the drivers opting to go just on their own to try and phase themselves out of the uh, battles in the mix but there are still drivers making overtaking moves in those long caterpillars going around the circuit snaking their way around the track but there are a couple of drivers who are using these opportunities to good measure there's a yellow flag once again at the Litchfield Bridge somebody else has gone and actually climbed over the fence so we have one driver who is not continuing any further and I have a feeling that that, well, I'm not entirely sure who that one is going to be, but we will uh, double check to see how many laps are being completed. Serenetti now goes to the top on a 60.75, a whisker in front of Will Murdoch, Zach Meekin in third from Carly Atkins. Now Reggie Dewey goes back onto the top again, 60.36. That's nearly four tenths of a second clear 
Yellow flags as we've had a spin on the way to the Litchfield Bridge on the outside line. And I'm afraid to say that is the 41 of Harry Cottrell, the S8 racing driver in the Fullerton chassis. So Harry Cottrell has had a spin on the way to the bridge. It obviously has gone through turn one. The back end's come around and he's spun it into the barriers. He's out of the cart. He's stood and he is okay. But unfortunately, that is Harry Cottrell not going to get any more than a 62.08 from this session. A real shame for Cottrell. And his qualifying session comes to an end. 1 minute 45 on the clock as Zach Meekin goes second on a 60.69. Across the line again and through to the first corner. Looks as though Harry Cottrell is okay. Just a little bit disappointed. Sadanetti fastest now. 59.97. He was still the only driver from the earlier time practice session to go under 60 seconds. Make that two now because Reggie Dewey has done a 59.74. I'm not sure we're going to get quite as fast as we did back in January, but then we didn't have a lot of icy conditions to cope with back in January. Here we are, though, with a 59.74. The current style, uh, the current uh, benchmark for the other drivers. Sadanetti second from Tyler Reed, Sam Shaw, Harvey Charter, and Dan Butterworth who has made a fantastic transition, Dan Butterworth, from the junior TKM fraternity to uh, move his way over to junior X30 and has done so ridiculously quickly. Will Murdoch in seventh place, Daryl Taylor in eighth place, Oliver Duffel going well for Mick Barrett Racing in ninth position, Carly Atkins there in tenth position until Zach Meekin drops up into fourth position for Fusion Motorsports. Sedanetti goes faster still, a 59.67. Now we're getting several drivers breaking the 60-second barrier. Sedanetti, Dewey, Tyler Reed, Harvey Charter, Sam Shaw, and Daryl Taylor are the six who have broken 60 seconds. No improvement on this lap from Reggie Dewey, but we are definitely starting to get some progress on the faster side of things. So Sedanetti, Reggie Dewey, Tyler Reed, and Harvey Charter. It looks like it's six and 66, bidding for pole position now. Alessandro Serenetti versus Reggie Dewey. Serenetti not as fast as he's gone in sector one before. Reggie Dewey not improving on this one either, but there are several drivers on the move. Daryl Taylor has gone faster than he has gone before in the first sector, so he may make a gain. Fastest of all in the second sector is Harvey Charter for Litchfield Motorsport, so several drivers could be about to jump up the order as the checkered flag comes out for Zach Meakin. He will be the first across the line, and he goes to 10th position, a 60.20. Not running in the crowd, costly for him, but let's see how it fares. Sandinetti goes fastest of all. Charter goes fastest of all now by two hundredths of a second. Charter goes to the top in front of Alessandro Serenetti. What can Reggie Dewey do out of the final turn and across the line? Reggie Dewey third. It's not enough. He ties with Sam Shaw, who has done a fantastic job there in fourth position. Good work from Sam Shaw on a 59.74. Two hundredths of a second quicker than Tyler Reed in fifth position. Sixth place for Daryl Taylor from Lucas Ellingham, Oliver Duffel, Tom Levin, Will Murdoch, Joshua McLean is 11th from Alicia Barrett. Then Tom Edgar and Zach Meakin. Carly Atkins and Alex Moody from Dan Butterworth and Marcus Littlewood. Then it is Blake Anglis, Josh Torpy, Charlie Rippin, Scott Sumpton, Archie Mace, Oscar Joyce, uh, Luke Barham, Will Orton and TJ McDonnell. Harry Cottrell ends up 28th after his earlier problems. Uh, the person who ended up out of luck on the uh, first uh, time qualifying lap, by the way, was his teammate, Reese Newburn. Reese Newburn ended up parked up at the first court of the uh, turn three, I should say, underneath the bridge. So uh, a very bad start to the day for the S8 racing team then, as their weekend has taken a big hammer blow for both of their Junior X30 drivers, Harry Cottrell and Reese Newburn in trouble. Charlotte Gaskin, by the way, was 29th in front of Oren England for CRG Island. And then the two that did not start are Charlie Cole and Aston Millar. I'm not entirely sure the two of them are present, having originally been included in the entry list. So Harvey Charter, pole position then for the Junior X30 first heat tomorrow. The 2.29 does a 59.58, two hundredths of a second quicker than Alessandro Sananetti. A brilliant start to the weekend from them. Reggie Dewey and Sam Shaw tied to the hundredth with Reggie Dewey pipping Sam Shaw. Tyler Reed in fifth place from Daryl Taylor in sixth. And then Lucas Ellingham, Oliver Duffel, Tom Lebanon, Will Murdoch rounding out the top ten. And then it is Josh McLean from Alicia Barrett. So that is the order in the top ten. We now focus from Junior X30 into Ayami Cadet. This is being split into two timed qualifying groups. Thus, uh, uh, basically, it is going to be a tale of two halves, this particular session. Because, of course, there are now two groups to focus on. And that will make things particularly tricky 
uh, for all of the cadets out there. We're not entirely sure who's going to be on pole position and won't find out until the second timed group because obviously it is based on an aggregate of the two groups. We're just waiting for the two S8 racing drivers. Very sadly, Reese Newbird and Harry Cottrell who were bang out of luck in their timed qualifying session for Junior X30. Their weekend is now about playing catch-up, but we've seen so many drivers in the past here at PF International who just get into a good rhythm and start to pick off carts one by one. And these two drivers are now going to have a mission of catch-up for the rest of uh, the day's action. So uh, it is going to be a really exciting battle for the drivers as they continue their run into Ayami Cadet now. Two-time qualifying groups for Ayami Cadet. Six minutes on the clock for each session. And this session will comprise of uh, Maximus Hall, Ben Smith, Will Knight, Alfie Gallagher, George Edgar, Alfie Garford, Ashton Hodgson, George Robinson, Finn Leslie, Alfie Slater, Fionn McLaughlin, Leo Jackson, Will Murta, Nathan Tai, Kian Nakamura Berta, Oliver Phillips, Connor Grant, Macaulay Bishop, Harry Jr. Burgoyne, Taylor Orridge, Michael Walker, Eddie Hayes, uh, Cathal Clark, Ben Folland, Freddie Allen, Jack Sant, Jay Holtby, Gabe Fairbrother, Fraser Anderson, and Lewis Werrell. What an amazing field of drivers. And that's only the first half of the Ayami Cadet field in Group A for time qualifying. Now, in the earlier practice sessions, they were separated by odd and even numbers. And we've had a spin already as two carts have uh, tagged each other on the run to the Litchfield Bridge. Uh, one of them is the 62. And the other one, I'm going to have to focus in, is the 96. So, unfortunately, Fraser Anderson tagging in there with, I think, actually, it is more likely to be Macaulay Bishop. So the two of those uh, drivers have ended up tagging each other. I think it was just a, one of those incidents where two drivers are going through the S's together. They've accidentally banged wheels because of a uh, bit of a damp patch. And neither driver is in dire straits. They have both got going again. And we've got a, oh, we've got a spin on the back straight. Now that, I think, is Leo Robinson. Uh, no, my apologies. It's the 27. That's Alfie Slater. So Alfie Slater has had a bit of a spin on the back straight. Now, that, I think what has happened there is he's come off the bridge uh, out through the right-hander and has ended up getting loose in a straight line and ends, has ended up putting one wheel on the grass and the cart has just got loose. But unfortunately for young Alfie Slater, younger brother of Freddie, of course, it is looking likely that he will have to start his first weekend of the campaign from the back of the grid. He's not going to be able to move any further forward. And that is a real shame for young Alfie. A chip off the old block and uh, very much like his sibling, very fast indeed. But now the drivers are going to have to work very hard indeed to uh, avoid him. Obviously, he is off on the grass on the outside. But uh, they are on their flying laps. So for the record, Harry Jr. Burgoyne is currently sat at the top, having completed the first lap in uh, 75.49. It will be faster than that by the time they come around again, of course. And uh, in terms of the time frame we have so far, uh, Ayami Cadet uh, was won last time out by Aidan Neat, uh, who is not in this group, but should be in the adjacent group. But, uh, his qualifying record was a 68.35. And again, I'm not entirely sure we're going to be hitting that sort of speed uh, that we had last time. For very similar reasons, of course, to what we said before. I think we need to take it as red that uh, they're not really going to be uh, in uh, position to challenge their own qualifying times. But straight up to the top of the group comes Macaulay Bishop at the end of his first flying lap. Bishop has done a 111.59. So maybe it wasn't Macaulay Bishop that got tagged into a spin. It might have been. Oh, it might have been somebody else, actually, considering I'm just trying to see who else uh, didn't come through. It might have been Ben Folland, actually, who had the spin. But he is now going pretty well in the SPR cart. So uh, he has gone through on a 115.02. So, so far, so good as far as the drivers are concerned. They've obviously got to try and uh, pick up the pace. But the fastest lap at the end of the first flying lap is Macaulay Bishops on a 61, uh, 71, sorry, 0.59 from Kian Nakamura Berta and the Gladiator. Maximus Hall in third position. Harry Junior Burgoyne fourth. Then Nathan Ty for Oliver Rowland Motorsport, Burgoyne's teammate. Uh, Taylor Orridge, then Lewis Werrell, Alfie Garford, Fionn McLaughlin for Strawberry Racing, and then Fusion's Ashton Hodgson in 10th position. Now, 
four weeks ago, it was very much a case of Oliver Rowland Motorsport versus Fusion Motorsport in the top ten. The two teams had five representatives each at the end of the race in the A final of Ayami Cadets. So both teams are going to be well represented again in this second round of the championship. And last time out, it was the blood to Fusion Motorsport as Aidan Neat got the win last time out four weeks ago, despite the fact that there were three different winners across the heats. So now they're going to have to try and do so all over again. Now it's Ashton Hodgson, his teammate, who has gone fastest in this first time group. A brilliant lap too, 70.53. Tied for second now, Macaulay Bishop and Maximus Hall, the PMR driver program racer. And he is there in third position at the moment, Maximus Hall. What a start to his season he's having. Uh, fourth place for Nathan Ty. He's actually gone faster than Lewis Werrell. So a really good run from Nathan Ty so far. Then it's Vion McLaughlin, Alfie Garford, Kian Nakamura Berta, Harry Jr. Burgoyne and Taylor Orridge. Then it's Cathal Clark from Oliver Phillips, Finn Leslie, Ben Folland, Alfie Gallagher and Will Murta. So already some uh, fast starts to this uh, time qualifying session as Ashton Hodgson is looking good for pole position for the moment. But as they come across the line again, they've only got time for one more lap as Kia Nakamura Berta does a 69.91. New fastest time, Maximus Hall, only six hundredths of a second behind him from Hodgson in third. Harry Jr. Burgoyne, then McCauley Bishop, Fionn McLaughlin now up to sixth place. Lewis Werrell, Nathan Ty, Alfie Garford and Oliver Phillips with Taylor Orridge coming up to 11th place. Cathal Clark, the PMR driver, has actually come into the pits, so not sure what's wrong with Cathal, but uh, Clark has pitted. 13th is now Gabe Fairbrother, the ultimate R driver. I was talking to uh, his team boss, uh, Ben Hingley, a little earlier on. That team is obviously going full guns for the 2019 season, and Gabe Fairbrother is definitely a young talent to keep an eye on, based up uh, not far from me, actually, up in the uh, northwest of England. So uh, that's a name you're going to be hearing quite a bit with this sort of pace. So uh, good to see that Gabe Fairbrother, the young man from Chester, is going to push his way further forward. Kia Nakamura Berta, currently the race leader, though, for pole position. And with three seconds to go, they don't have a lot of time to change that. They're going to come out of the final turn. The checkered flag will fly. And as Brian waves the checkered flag on the main starting gantry, it is going to be Kia Nakamura Berta who gets a 69.82. New fastest lap as he crosses the line. Hall is second. Burr going up to third from Hodgson. Bishop, Nathan Ty now sixth. The reigning Biralart Cadet champion. Sixth position there. Very good run from him. Werrell in seventh from Fionn McLaughlin. Taylor Orridge and Alfie Garford. Then it's Oliver Phillips, Cathal Clark. Will Murta comes up to 13th place in front of Gabe Fairbrother. And then it is, uh, oh, a few more changes as Jay Holpe and George Robinson break up ahead of them. Then it is Clark. Then Ben Folland has gone 16th from Murta and Leo Jackson. Then it is Gabe Fairbrother and Finn Leslie in 20th ahead of Alfie Gallagher. Fraser Anderson has done very well. Don't forget he was the king of Bambinos last year. So Fraser Anderson doing well there. George Edgar in 23rd, the latest name from the Edgar fraternity. And then Connor Grant, Eddie Hayes, Ben Smith, Freddie Allen and Michael Walker who comes through on a 117-14. Not a bad run for a newbie. And then sadly, of course, Alfie Slater didn't get a lap in at all in qualifying after spinning on his outlap. So Alfie Slater is going to have to do things the hard way tomorrow by charging through the field. But if he's anything like his older brother, Freddie, I have a feeling that that won't take him too long. And I'm sure Freddie will be on the blower to him tonight. Here's how you do it, mate. Because Freddie's done it several times over his career. Most famously, of course, right here about five months ago. At the uh, Super 1 finale, he did exactly that on the, the PF International Circuit. So uh, if anybody can teach Alfie how to go through the field like a cat out of a bag, it's his older brother, Freddie. So we'll keep an eye on things tomorrow. But Kian Nakamura Berta leads this group from Maximus Hall, Harry Jr. Burgoyne, Ashton Hodgson, Macaulay Bishop, and Nathan Ty in the top six from Lewis Werrell, Fionn McLaughlin, Taylor Orridge, and Alfie Garford. The gap between them all, 1.43 seconds. But another six minutes now needs to go onto the board for the second time group of Ayami Cadet. And this group has just as much in terms of speed. Just as much uh, ability in terms of speed as uh, before. So it's a really exciting battle in front of us. The second group will have just as many top talents in the mix, and some of them are the big names of Ayami Cadet Racing 
at this point. So we're going to see quite a few of the top challengers as they come out. The green flag flies at the top of the gantry and six more minutes go on the board and they will come out of the blocks once again. So let's see how the second group of IAMI Cadet drivers will progress. Aidan Neat, Vinnie Phillips, Brandon Carr, Harley Keeble, Oliver Wright, Alex O'Grady, Jack Cunningham, Kira Harris, Ethan Jeff Hall, Sky Parker, Ella Stevens, Monday Junior Canini, Jack Moat, Zach Knight, Joel Billington, Archie Clark, George Dawson, uh, sorry, George Davison, I should say, Michael Gray, Micah Taylor, Charlie Hart, Will Antrobus, Ryan Ward, Joe Rippin, Alex Biles, Cole Glover, Mason Bishop, Callum Graffin, Edison Purcell, and Sonny Smith. So the time to beat is a 69.82. They will be working very hard indeed to make it happen. So we'll uh, work out and see how the drivers go from that point on. Obviously, it is going to be very, very tough to uh, balance out how things are going. But the drivers will obviously want to do a fair job and push their way further forward. So the uh, battle will continue as obviously the drivers are trying to make themselves uh, very much at the top spot. But Kian Nakamura Berta's time of 69.82 seconds is very much up for grabs. Aidan Neat, he got a decent qualifying time last time, of course, four weeks ago, and set the qualifying record for the 2019 season at 68.35. So they come through at the end of the first lap. This one is not the one that's going to be very indicative of pole position because they have to be at flying speed all the way around. A few drivers getting caught out in the train around the circuit as obviously you have to run in a pack but you need to make sure that you are chasing with somebody rather than against them. So this is going to be an interesting challenge. For the moment, the uh, three privateers uh, that have not come through to complete a timed lap are Oliver Wright, Kira Harris, and George Davison. I have a feeling that the three of them may not be present, but uh, Jack Mowat is learning on the job as he goes past uh, behind the rest of the field. Everybody's got to start somewhere. You've got to give these guys the credit. You have to learn on the job. So, the time to beat is Kia Nakamura Berta's 69.82 seconds. Now, that is not going to be easy, but we have got a great group of drivers in this mix. And so far, it's Brandon Carr ahead of Harley Keeble, Ethan Jeff Hall, Ella Stevens, Sonny Smith, and Aidan Neat. And that is going to change. We've got some big names behind them. MJ Canini is in the mix. So is Archie Clark. Vinnie Phillips is in there. Zach Knight, Sky Parker, recent winner of the Kia Miller Under-13 Racer of the Year Award. So through comes Sonny Smith. He blasts in with a 71-1-2. He's a force to be reckoned with. Sonny Smith is definitely going to be going for it. They come through once again. Sonny Smith leads the way from Harley Keeble. Brandon Carr in third. Aidan Neat in fourth from Ethan Jeff Hall. Vinnie Phillips. Alex O'Grady. Then Micah Taylor. Ella Stevens. And Monday Junior Canini, who is currently in 10th position. Not a bad run so far. The gap between them all is currently 1.87. In fact, Monday Junior Canini's time is identical to that of Archie Clark's. So they are going to be about the same sort of pace for the moment at least. But we've got under three minutes to go in the session. So down the main straight, the ORM drivers are assisting each other. Sonny Smith, Harley Keeble and Brandon Carr working in unison as they run together down the back straights and up towards the Mike Wilson complex. They go through the right-hander. But the three of them are obviously going to work in formation to get as much out of their machines as they possibly can. Oliver Rowland is here, fresh from his Formula E antics at Santiago. And he's been working with them, trying to push them further forward down the main straight and across the start-finish line. The number eight comes through. Brandon Carr goes to the top in front of Smith and Keeble. No problems there for those three. 110.53 for Brandon Carr. Puts him on the top spot. Ellis Stevens goes to fourth. But then Aidan Neat comes along and displaces. Aidan Neat to third. Vinnie Phillips to fifth now. Ellis Stevens still there in sixth position. This could be the weekend. She really makes her big jump in progress. Alice Powell, W Series candidate, helping out, of course, and coaching her forward. Ethan Jeff Hall, seventh from Alex O'Grady. Archie Clark up to ninth now. And for Sam Pollock Racing, Charlie Hart has come up into the top ten. Charlie Hart, of course, is the uh, son of uh, Fun Cup champion Chris Hart. And it's great to see that uh, Charlie is easily as quick, if not quicker, than Dad. So it's going to be interesting to see Charlie Hart make good progress. That's great to see him up there in the top ten. And that's very deserving. Only 1.04 back. And uh, that's a name you need to remember. Charlie Hart, very quick indeed. And in the top 10 already in his first time qualifying session. So through they come. One minute 15 left on the clock. And as they come through once more, Brandon Carr 
is working with teammates Sonny Smith and Harley Keeble. But Aiden Neat is the danger man. He's now splitting them. He's there in third position. Smith goes fastest to uh, 70.09, just two hundredths of a second in front of Harley Keeble. Aiden Neat is only five hundredths back from that, though. So Aiden Neat is on a 110.14. Sonny Smith is on a 110.09. There's nothing in it between these three. And so far, they are catching the pace of Kian Nakamura, Berta, Maximus Hall, and Harry Jr. Burgoyne. But Sonny Smith's time for fastest in this session is only good enough for sixth. And interestingly, Harley Keeble in second place in this time group is the identical same time to Nathan Tai. So the first session is actually looking to be a little bit quicker than the second, unless, of course, things change in the next 20 seconds, because we are about to come to a close of proceedings in this session. So the checkered flag is being prepared, and this is the crunch time. We'll find out who's going to be at the sharp end of the Ayami Cadet grid. Is it still going to be Kian Nakamura Berta, or can these guys find that additional two-tenths of a second to displace them? They're going to come through the final chicane, with the ORM carts helping each other out down the main straight. Have they gained? 109.62 from Sonny Smith. That's pole position. Keeble goes with him in second. Brandon Carr has not done enough to beat them, though. He will only go eighth. Can the likes of Aiden Neat go further forward? Yes, Aiden Neat comes up to eighth now. But only Smith and Keeble have gone faster, and they've gone faster than everybody. So Smith and Keeble are first and second in qualifying overall as well as in the group. Neat is third in this group from Brandon Carr, Vinnie Phillips, Monday Junior Canini and Ella Stevens from Archie Clark. Charlie Hart is in there again in ninth place. Alex O'Grady in tenth from Michael Gray and Micah Taylor. Ethan Jeff Hall, Callum Graffin, Edison Purcell, Zach Knight, Ryan Ward, Jack Cunningham, Joe Rippon and Sky Parker. From Joel Billington and Mason Bishop, Cole Glover and Will Antrobus, then Alex Biles and Jack Mowat. But what an amazing field that is. Sonny Smith and Harley Keeble, the only two able to better the times from the previous Ayami Cadet group. Aidan Neat is third in this group, but only eighth overall behind the likes of Nakamura Berta, Hall, Burgoyne, Hodgson, and Bishop. It's a really interesting first race. This is set to be tomorrow. And of course, they've got to split them up again to go into the differing heats. So this is going to be very interesting, but Smith is going to be the top dog tonight as he is the fastest of all for the Oliver Roland Motorsport team. We did say last year many times that Sonny Smith is a force to be reckoned with, and now in 2019, having moved to the Oliver Roland Motorsport stable, it looks like that prophecy is coming true. Great to see the battles so far in Ayami Cadet, and there's going to be plenty more to come from them over the weekend. We'll see lots of sensational action from Ayami Cadet this weekend. We move, however, from that particular category onto the next on the bill, which is set to be Junior Max. Now, Junior Max was an intriguing one last time because, obviously, uh, they were still getting a few drivers back from their uh, summer holidays, <laughs> from their uh, winter breaks, I should say, and uh, we had some very interesting battles from the drivers in uh, Junior Rotax last time out. They blast out of the blocks and go for their qualifying laps now. But uh, Junior Rotax last time saw uh, some really exciting challenges. Kai Hunter taking the victory last time out with uh, both heat wins and the final. Uh, pretty much running away with it for the Dan Holland racing team with uh, Matty Hinchley behind him in second and Matthew Higgins in third. Harrison Collings, Ed Matthews and Ryan Taylor Truman were the ones in the top six with them. But this weekend sees the return of the E-plate. Tom Adams returns to PF International and there's no doubt in anybody's minds that he is sure to be a challenger right from the start of the weekend. So Tom Adams for Coles Racing is definitely going to be a threat from the off. Now, in terms of uh, qualifying speed, it was not Kai Hunter who got the pole position last time out in January. That honour fell to Matty Hingley of Avagelli. Uh, he is uh, obviously representing the Ultimate R team as well. And he did a 59-2-1 last time out. I'm not sure that's going to be possible again in the much slipperier conditions of the... Uh, circuit that we have now air temperature four degrees celsius the track is drying at this point of course as it has been all day oh dear that's not gone well for the 99 blasting across the grass there ben maxim of the coles racing team uh, goes across the grass under the litchfield bridge so his first major flying lap 
is going to have some difficulties. He's hopefully going to get the pace back again for the record. Jack Stedman was the fastest one through on his first run lamp, uh, run through. And uh, then it is obviously going to be uh, a bit a difficult uh, situation from that point on. So let's see how the drivers will go on what is their first flying lap in this junior Rotax session. So Jack Stedman leads the way. Will Egby in second. Bain Kaisley third from Kai Hunter. They come around again and Will Egby comes through on a 63-1-4. Ben Kaisley immediately tops that for KR Sport. Matthew Higgins in second for Vision. Kai Hunter third for the DHR squad. Hugh Lawrenson, Ryan Taylor Truman and Will Egby. Tom Adams has had a slower start than I expected him to. He's only eighth at the moment. So a bit of a battle for the drivers at the moment. So they battle away. Ben Kaisley, Higgins, Hunter, Lawrenson, Taylor Truman, Egby, Hingley, Adams and Stedman. With Kieran Kay rounding out the top ten at the moment for persistence. Then Harry Newman Oakley, John Knox, Harrison Collings, uh, James Winter, Will Ellswood, Madison Foley, Charlie Knight and Josh Valance. With Will Walker and Brandon K. Nagelvoort. So Ben Kaisley comes through at the end of another flying lap in the uh, gaggle of carts as they come out of the Mike Wilson complex. They've got to keep pushing their way forward. But Ben Kaisley is looking good at this moment in time. He continues to push progress further forward. What's the times now as they come through? Kaisley goes faster still. 60.96. Very good run that. Matthew Higgins second, Hingley third from Kai Hunter, Will Ellswood, Kieran Kay going well in sixth place from James Winter in the 698 racing cart, Harrison Collings, Tom Adams is ninth and Jack Stedman in tenth position. So the E-plate, Tom Adams really struggling at the moment to get the cart up to temperature. He's not finding the speed we thought he might, just a whisker over two minutes to go. And they are still battling away for supremacy here at the Trent Valley Cart Club. The second round of the Winter Series. Jake Sanson in the commentary box with you in the midst of the Junior Rotax Max time qualifying session in preparation for tomorrow's races. Ben Kaisley leading the way for KR Sport. Matthew Higgins in second. Matty Hingley third. From Kai Hunter, Will Ellswood and Kieran Kay. Then it is James Winter, Harrison Collings, Tom Adams and Jack Stedman. From Will Egby, Harry Newman Oakley and Ben Maxim. Now they come through once again. Fastest of all in the first sector is Matty Hingley. Fastest of all in the second is Ben Kaisley. Fastest of all in the third is Kai Hunter. So it's so tight at the top end of the field. Kaisley currently the fastest of all on a 60.96. So they're still a good 1.6 seconds away from the pace they showed in January. That is no major surprise based on the differing conditions. Much more greasy and slippery here thanks to the ice that we had overnight and are likely to have again heading into tomorrow. So a really good start for Ben Kaisley in this session. Matty Hingley second. Fastest of all in the first sector, though. Matthew Higgins on this lap. Ben Kaisley fastest of all in the second sector on this lap. So there are going to be some gains, and I think they're only going to have time for one more flying lap after this one. So they come out of the final corner and down the main straight. And it is the 77 who leads the charge across. Will Egby for Project 1. Casey goes fastest of all. 60.60. Matthew Higgins goes faster. 60.51 now. Nine hundredths of a second quicker. So it's Higgins from Casey. Taylor Truman. Kai Hunter. Hugh Lawrenson and Tom Adams now up to sixth position. Now he's finding his feet and getting himself back up to speed again. Matty Hingley, seventh place from Will Ellswood, Harry Newman Oakley and James Winter. Then Harrison Collings, Kieran Kay, Charlie Knight, Will Egby and Luke Sharp. From Dan Armstrong and Ben Maxim, Jack Stedman and Josh Fallon ahead of Madison Foley. Down the mid of the back straight and they come up to the S's. The chequered flag is being prepared as the end of the session now is upon us. And out of the final few corners, it's going to be close between these guys in the top 10. Will Egby has dropped all the way to 15th and he's the one at the head of the queue of carts coming across the line in that gaggle. Matthew Higgins fastest, but is it going to remain that way? They come down the main straight and right in the wheel tracks of Egby across the line comes the 54 of Ben Kaisley. He does not improve. Matty Hingley does the third. Kai Hunter beats them all back by a hundredth of a second. Kai Hunter finds the pace and gets a 60.5 dead. Just a whisker in front of Matthew Higgins to the hundredth of a second. He beats him by 
0.01. And up to third comes Hugh Lawrenson. Good work from the 698 racing driver right through to third on a 60.53. Will Ellswood is fourth from Ben Casey and Matty Hingley. Ryan Taylor Truman in seventh place ahead of Tom Adams and Harrison Collings. Kieran Kay in the P10 spot from Will Egby, who does recover to 11th. Good work from him. Then James Winter, Harry Newman Oakley, Jack Stedman and Josh Valance. Then Charlie Knight is 16th from Luke Sharp, Dan Armstrong, Ben Maxim and rounding out the 20 is Madison Foley from Oscar Hull. Then Alex Doddington, Josh Powell, Will Walker, Brandon K. Nagelvort, Dan Parron Smith, Reese Hurd and then John Knox who had a couple of laps for the Cannon Motorsport squad but unfortunately pulled off early. And then there are a few from the ranks who are not here. Jordan Morris, Max Edmondson, Jensen Watts, James Crossley, Tiernan Rourke and Louis Weaver, all of whom were due to be here but have yet to set times in this particular session. So I'm guessing that means we may not see much of them over the course of the session after all. But it is still going to be a really strong battle as we move into the next category, which of course is going to go from Junior Max to Mini X30. You're listening to Race Day Live on Downforce UK, brought to you by Clapham North MOT, Motorsport Days Live, Stopwatch Hospitality and Trade Price Cars. Out in position now then for the Mini X30 time qualifying session. Very exciting battle for them over the course of uh, proceedings last time. Mini X30 is going around for time qualifying now because we have uh, the drivers out there putting on a really good show having had uh, the same situation last time. Mini X30 was very strong four weeks ago, don't forget. Oliver Greenall coming through and getting the victory. The youngster from Essex last time with the final win, despite having not taken a single one of the heats prior to that. Uh, Ed Pearson and Arvid Lindblad were the ones chasing him down. They are on European duty, but that doesn't mean we don't have top talent this weekend for Mini X30. Evan Brown, Jessica Edgar, Jack Cox, Thomas Bohr, Jacob McComb, Finley McKee, Luke Watts, Gabriel Stilp, Aidan Line, Alfie Briggs, Hayden Chance, Matt Hyde, Oliver Greenall is back, of course, from Ben Dawson and Jack Sherwood, Dane Tucker, uh, Bart Harrison, Antonis Sofronio, Theo Makouris is in the mix as well, JJ Russell, and then the Finn, Yuso Laukonen, is in the mix as well. So plenty of great talents to uh, come racing here this weekend for Mini X30. But Theo Makouris, for the record, has gone faster than everybody on his outlap. It's the flying laps that count. But Theo Makouris is the fastest of all in the first sector. And this is on his actual flying lap. So Theo Makouris is clearly out to prove a point. Luke Watts goes a little faster, though, a little further back. So Theo Makouris clearly wants to put the Mad Croc on pole position straight away. He was one of the top privateers in Honda Cadet. Now he runs with the Crop Promotion Racing Team. Luke Watts, of course, for Cato Motorsport. Luke Watts doing a fantastic job there in second position at the moment. But that is set to change. And as they continue to tussle, they will come out of the final chicane and over the line once again. McCurris now improves to a 64.67. How does that compare with the qualifying pace of last time? Well, they were in the 60s last time. 60.51 was the time set by Oliver Greenall in qualifying last time around. So we'll see what he could do this time. He's straight up to second. 64.84 behind McCurris, who is the fastest of all still on a 64.67. He's so strong in the middle sector. That's where Theo Makouris is really primed for pole. But Makouris leads the way on the first flying lap from Greenall. Watts still in fourth place from Jacob McComb. Jess Edgar is sixth from Luke, Lewis Gardner, uh, Dane Tucker, Evan Brown and Marcus Luzio. Then it is Matthew Hyde, Jack Cox, JJ Russell, Bart Harrison, Antonis Sofronio. Then Alfie Kotia, Alfie Briggs, Finley McKee, Tom Bohr, Ben Dawson, Juso Laukonen, Aiden Line. Hayden Chance and Jack Sherwood. 24 Mini X30s in the mix. It's a brilliant field for the Mini X30 contingent and proof that the class is going strong. Theo McCurris comes down the main straight, looking good for pole position at the moment. He improves to a 63.83. That's a full second quicker than anybody else, but everyone is set to improve as well, don't forget. Gabriel Stilp 
Makuris' teammate comes through. 0.3 of a second back. Luke Watts goes fastest of all on a 62.88. And that is what happens when you run in a crowd. You've got somebody to chase. You've got somebody to displace. Oliver Green all in second place. McComb goes third. Now Hyde goes third. So Hyde is third for McComb. Luis Gardner. Theo McCurry is sixth now from Bart Harrison. Gabriel Stilp. Jessica Edgar is ninth from Dane Tucker and Evan Brown. Then Jack Cox. Alfie Briggs going well. Cox and Briggs for the Jack Dex Racing Team. Aiden Line, 14th from Lucio, Russell, Sophronio, Dawson, Laukinen, uh, Kotia, Bohr, Sherwood, McKee, and Chance. So a really good run from the drivers th thus far. Six tenths of a second still between Watts and Greenall. So the Cato Motorsport driver having a brilliant run. Luke Watts really wanting to run at the front by example. And he is doing a spectacular job at the moment in qualifying. His best is a 62.88. Over the line, Makuris goes up to second on a 63.17, but that is going to be beaten by a couple more drivers, I fear. Watts goes through. Stilp does not beat it. Watts has gone through on a 62.48. New fastest lap. Second is now Greenall ahead of Makuris. Harrison up to fourth. Cox up to fourth now. But Makuris has not been displaced for third. Now he has. Luis Gardner comes through for third. Makuris down to fourth from McComb in fifth place now ahead of Jack Cox. Then Bart Harrison and Matthew Hyde. Jess Edgar and Gabriel Stilp. From Dane Tucker and Evan Brown. Alfie Briggs has improved. He's 13th from Lucio, McKee and Line. Sophronio, Cotia, Russell, Laukin and Dawson, Bohr, Sherwood and Chance. But still, it looks good for Luke Watts. He'll get one more flying lap after this one. But so far, so good for Luke Watts, who leads the way from Oliver Greenall, Lewis Gardner, Theo McCurris, Jacob McComb and Jack Cox. McCurris is still on his own, just pounding around, trying to get the balance of the car on his own. He's on another fast lap. This will be a good one for Makuris. He goes up to third on a 62.83 and he's only got one more lap to go. Makuris is going against the grain but finding the speed as Stilp comes up to seventh place. Watts improves again in pole position thus far. 62.15. Greenall can't get near to him. 0.36 is the gap. Jessica Edgar now comes up to third. Gardner now comes up to third place. Hyde now comes to third. So Watts leads Greenall, Matthew Hyde, Lewis Gardner, Jessica Edgar, and Theo McCurris in the top six. Then it's Jack Cox and Jacob McComb, Aiden Line and Bart Harrison. The checkered flag flies. And for Ben Dawson, Finn McKee, and Yuso Laukinen, it comes a little bit too soon to get another lap in. Thomas Ball likewise. So now the 37 Luke Watts has caught up to the back of Gabriel Stilp's car. This could end up causing a bit of a headache for Watts if he can't get through and improve on the last lap. He was fastest of all in the first sector. Greenall matched him to the hundredth of a second. So Greenall isn't done yet. However, he has been heavily impeded in the second sector. So I'm not sure Greenall's going to improve. McCurris improves to third a 62.54. What about Watts and Greenall? Watts comes across the line. And he has done a 62.10. That's even better. Still up to fifth place. Greenall comes across the line. He will not improve. But is there going to be a change for third position again? Aiden Line comes up to sixth place. Up to second goes Jacob McComb. Now to second comes Matthew Hyde. Oh, Hyde goes second. So Hyde is 0.26 behind Luke Watts. Matthew Hyde for Litchfield in second place. Jacob McComb, a brilliant third. Not bad at all for a privateer. Oliver Greenall is fourth from Theo McCurris and Lewis Gardner. Gabriel Stilp, Aiden Line, Jess Edgar and Jack Cox. A brilliant run in the top 10. Bart Harrison is 11th in the end from Alfie Briggs, who climbs to 12th. Then it is Dane Tucker and Evan Brown, Marcus Luzio and Alfie Cotia. Then Jusso Laukinen, Anthony Sophronio, JJ Russell, Ben Dawson, Finn McKee, Thomas Bohr, Jack Sherwood, and Hayden Chance. A very exciting run indeed there from Mini X30. But pole position goes the way of Luke Watts, and deservedly so after that qualifying run. 62-1-0. Fastest in all three sectors, and his best could have been a 61.87. But he was the fastest of all in all three sectors. A very deserving pole position for Luke Watts, ahead of Matthew Hyde and Jacob McComb of Chester, from Oliver Greenall of Fusion Motorsport in fourth position, then Theo McCurris, still fresh out of Honda Cadet, don't forget, in fifth in Mini X30, and Lewis Gardner sixth. Six more minutes on the clock. It's time for another category of drivers. And they will head out on circuit. This time we go from the minis back to the world of junior racing. And this time it is Minimax and Junior TKM who share the grid for this one. Two carts going straight over the grass on the way to the Litchfield Bridge. 
the first time of asking. But it's obviously going to be a very interesting start to proceedings for uh, Junior TKM and Minimax. Now they're being let out in two bunches, of course, because there is a difference between Minimax and uh, Junior TKM. For the Junior TKM contingent, it's Connor Kearney, Louis Harvey, Spencer Lane, Dominic Roberts, Will Howells, Alex Roberts, Harry Yardley-Rose, Ben Higgins, uh, Dale Whittaker, Charlie Webb, Harry Rainwright, who took the victory last time, Harvey Roth, Tom Johnson, Josh Raystrick, Harvey Cole, Brooklyn Thomas, Charles Guyard, Dominic Kilmister, and Benjamin Cox. And then of the Minimax Brigade, it is Archie Kitching, Sam Gornall, Harley Horton, Luke Evans, Luke Ringham, Callum Green, Owen Ross, Nicole Sutherland, Harry Reynolds, Callum Voisin, Ryan Willis, Declan Russell, Jez Williams, Jed Murphy, Tristan Rennie, and Juan Waniki. So a very interesting race this will turn out to be tomorrow. Minimax and Junior TKM sharing the grid. 30 seconds between them, of course, on the road. So I've got my work cut out doubly tomorrow because there'll basically be two races within the same race. Ben Higgins goes fastest thus far of the uh, Junior TKM contingent. Ben Higgins in front of Connor Kearney, Charlie Webb, and Dominic Kilmister. But again, it's the same story. We need to wait for their actual flying laps to come through. But... Uh, the fact that these two classes are sharing a grid means that it is two qualifying sessions in one, effectively. For the record, Jed Murphy has gone top five overall, fifth position, and uh, currently leading the way in terms of his position. And we've got a spin on the back straight. Now, that is one of the Coles Racing drivers, and that is the number eight. Now, that appears to be a big problem for Sam Gornall. Sam Gornall has had an issue on the back straight. He's got it going again, but I wonder if he just got squeezed by somebody and has ended up with one wheel on the grass and he's spun in exactly the same place as Alfie Slater did in the Iami Cadets a little earlier on. But that's a very strange place to have an incident, but Sam Gornall has recovered and he's not going to lose out in terms of his qualifying prowess. So he will continue, but that is a very strange situation. So we're in the flying laps element of qualifying now. Louis Harvey in front of Connor Kearney and Charlie Webb from Ben Higgins and Dominic Kilmister. Harvey Cole, Josh Raystrick, Dale Whitaker, Spencer Lane and Harry Wainwright is the top 10 at the moment in junior TKM from Harvey Roth, Dominic Roberts, Charles Guyard and Benjamin Cox. Now Jed Murphy has done his first flying lap for Minimax and he has gone up into 14th overall. Next up in Minimax is Tristan Rennie from Ryan Willis, Jez Williams, Harley Horton, and Juan Maniki. Up to 17th overall comes Owen Ross. Second in Minimax. Callum Green goes faster. Willis and Williams have gone a lot faster. Horton has two. Archie Kitching has gone fourth overall. Now Tristan Rennie goes fourth overall as Charlie Webb improves to fastest overall in junior TKM as well. Yellow flags. And we've got one of the cosmic carts has spun it up at first corner that is the 30 that has gone around and i think that might be i'm just double checking who 30 is i think that's nicole sutherland the privateer on the cosmic chassis so a big problem for nicole sutherland but she has got the cart going again without hitting the barriers and there's a yellow flag a spin that's that's the number five that's gone this time for coles racing so big problems for some of the big names. That's Archie Kitching, who's gone off at the second hairpin, the left-hander in the midsection of the course. So a very strange situation there for Sam Gornall. But now, of course, we've got uh, a multitude of junior TKMs mixing it with the Minimaxes. It'll be interesting to see what sort of speed they can all deliver. Jed Murphy has gone faster than them all in Minimax. Now Harley Horton goes back to the top. And watch out for the likes of Tristan Rennie as they, he will want to try and come through again, although he hasn't improved on this lap. Of the TKMs, it is Connor Kearney who's now gone fastest of all on a 64-3-1. Charlie Webb in second from Dominic Kilmister and Harvey Cole. Then Louis Harvey and Spencer Lane. Dominic Roberts in seventh. Next up is the leader in the Minimax, actually, Harley Horton. Then Harry Wainwright is ninth for TKM. And Jed Murphy, another Minimax driver, in tenth position. Harry Ardley Rose displacing them, though as he goes eighth overall for Tim Wilson Motorsport. So the last minute of qualifying. Yellow flags as we've had an off up at the bridge. And that looks to me like one of the TWM carts, actually. The 23 has had a misdemeanor there. 
Now, the 23 is Luke Evans. So Luke Evans has had an issue on the uh, underside of the Litchfield Bridge. He has got going again, though. So he comes back into the midfield section. So a bit of a rude awakening there for Luke Evans. He's got himself going, but that was a bit of a moment there under the Litchfield Bridge as the drivers are now entering their final qualifying lap. And for Archie Kitching, it really is now or never. He's just gone second fastest of the Minimax drivers. So it's looking good, but he needs to keep this sort of pace up as we go into the final few seconds of qualifying. And now the checkered flag is going to come out. And I think the first one to receive it is going to be the 36 of Harvey Roth. So Harvey Roth comes through. Dominic Roberts can only do fourth in junior TKM, a 64-28 for him. That's half a second back from Conor Kearney's current benchmark. So let's see what happens as they finish up. Harry Ardley Rose slips to 15th in the end overall. Jed Murphy improves in Minimax, but is not able to go faster than the Rhino Goo driver, Jez Williams. Sam Gornel goes fastest in Minimax and fourth overall, though, on 104.28. Uh, really good run from Sam Gornel. And now second overall goes Jez Williams for the Rhino Goo squad. A 103.97 for Jez Williams. Connor Kearney comes over the line. Now... And it will be a pole position for him. He does not improve his time, but he remains at the top spot. Harry Wainwright leaves it till right at the end, though, to shoot up to third overall. Harvey Cole goes top. Harvey Cole gets it by two hundredths of a second. And there's a yellow flag under the Litchfield Bridge again. So we've had another incident up at the Litchfield Bridge. I think that is just them slowing things down, actually. My apologies. So they are just slowing things down into position at the end of what has been a very tough qualifying session. But Harvey Cole goes fastest of all for Litchfield. Harvey Cole uh, up the top spot. A 103.69. Two hundredths of a second quicker than Connor Kearney. Next up is the leader of Minimax, Jez Williams. Then Louis Harvey for TKM. And then his compatriots, Harry Wainwright, Dale Whitaker, and Charlie Webb. Sam Gornell is the second fastest Minimax in eighth overall. Two more TKMs round up the overall top ten. Dominic Roberts and Spencer Lane. Then for Minimax in 11th overall, third in Minimax is Harley Horton. And then comes Ben Higgins and Charles Guyard with the rest of the field very tightly in behind. Well, very interesting there. And good to see a fantastic qualifying session from the combination of Junior TKM and uh, Minimax. All going very well from their point of view. It is Honda Connect that is up next. And that's going to be a real cracker. You're listening to Race Day Live on Downforce UK, brought to you by Clapham North MOT, Motorsport Days Live, Stopwatch Hospitality, and Trade Price Cars. So with Honda Cadet imminent, it is going to be an interesting one to see who comes out on top of that. Sonny Smith has done his Iami Cadet pole position. Can he make it two out of two now? Because he is also doubling up on duty in uh, Honda Cadet. He is in this first qualifying group, again in the Oliver Rowland Motorsport colours. And he will be there with Lewis Islin, Stephen Duncan, Josh Gambar, Bradley Bick, Macy Hitter, Zach Drummond, Blake Ticehurst, Jack Thompson, Jamie Perrily, Ewan Charman, Henry Nuxedberg, uh, Connor Leishman, Oliver Guyard, Damian Barris Haggett, Jacob Gilman, Oscar Sullivan, Dylan Mackay, Owen Neve, uh, Sonny Mortensen, Oliver Buckton, Zika Hopkins Collis, Henry Gregory, Ryland Eckberg, Joshua Rudd, Sophie Kinghorn, Ollie Handley, Tom Behrman, Liam Hartley, Wesley Swain, Josh Patch, and Ollie Poole. And that's just the first qualifying group, don't forget. So it will be interesting to see what happens. Sonny Smith, Lewis Iceland, and Stephen Duncan lead them out. Sonny Smith, having got the earlier Ayami Cadet pole position, will want to get pole in both classes if he can. It's uh, been quite a while since we've seen uh, both cadet classes uh, topped over the course of one campaign. I seem to remember the last person to do so was Kian Jewis, who has uh, gone on to some big things and is in the world of British Formula 4 these days, of course. But Sonny Smith is gutting for two pole positions out of two. Whether he can do it or not, that's a completely different story. So we'll see how the drivers battle away for supremacy. It will be very tough as uh, drivers are obviously trying to get themselves 
uh, into a decent track position at the moment. Two groups of Honda Cadets, which means that we're going to get a very busy B final tomorrow. But a lot of drivers will obviously have a lot of hard work in front of them as they all want to put themselves into the right position at the right time. A few of them making some overtaking moves to get good track position ready for their first flying lap out on the circuit. Fastest of all in the first sector thus far for the record is Blake Ticehurst. In the second, it's Henry Gregory. But as they come round to start their first flying lap, this is where the Honda Cadets are really going to be pushing it. So who's going to be the next king of Honda Cadet in the 2019 national karting scene? This time qualifying session could give us a bit of an indication of that. As obviously the drivers are wanting to put on a bit of a show this season. For the record, in this group, it is so far Jamie Perrily who leads the way. Jamie Perrily, fastest of all from this first section. Uh, Blake Ticehurst, Stephen Duncan and Sonny Smith from Henry Gregory, Ewan Charman, Macy Hitter, Zach Drummond, Connor Leishman and Damian Barris Haggart from Henry Nagai Zederberg, uh, Sonny Mortensen, Jacob Gilman and Sophie Kinghorn, Dylan Mackay, Wesley Swain, Oliver Guyard and Lewis Islin. But this is the qualifying lap that matters. This is the first of the flying laps as the light is slowly fading now once again. Quarter past four local time here at PF International. So the drivers are obviously panning around getting some fast laps in the mix. They'll want to do so sooner rather than later as they come through that long twisting section at the Mike Wilson Complex. Then into the first of two lefts that takes them back onto the home straight. The final turn, the right-hander. It is looking a little drier there, but it's still not bone dry that final corner. So there is really only one dry line and if you get that slightly wrong, it will compromise the whole lap. And then beginning of the next one again. And as they come through over the line, it is Ewan Sharman who goes fastest of all in the first group of carts to come through. Henry Gregory second from Macy Hitter and Connor Leishman. Jamie Perrily, Sonny Smith and Blake Ticehurst from Rylan Eckbird, Dylan Mackay and Zach Drummond. So the gauntlet is thrown down. Hartley, Duncan, Engzederberg, Rudd, Agambar, Bick, Patch and Gilman. From Sonny Mortensen and Ollie Handley, straight up to 11th comes Damian Barris Haggart. But now they are on their second flying laps. Fastest of all in the first sector, Ewan Charman. And then it is Sonny Smith, who's done a 25-06. So Sonny Smith could potentially be on his way to uh, making his step further forward. Oh, bit of a mistake out of the second hairpin for the 33 of Macy Hitter for Heinz Racing. Just one wheel on the grass, and that's all it takes to get things slightly out of whack. But the drivers still panning around, getting those lap times in. Two minutes, 23 on the clock. You don't get long to get these things done in Honda Cadet. You don't have a lot of time to mess around. So the drivers are going to push very hard as they come out of that final corner and onto the main straight once again. You and Charman pole position for now. Will it change? It already has. Stephen Duncan does a 71-71. Zach Drummond now second from Charman. Gregory and Leishman up to the top comes Sonny Smith. No major shocks. 70.87 for Sonny Smith now. So that's a good benchmark, but that can be beaten. So through comes Sonny Smith, having got the fastest of all in all three sectors. Stephen Duncan second from Zach Drummond and Ewan Charman, Henry Gregory and Engzederberg. So Henry Engzederberg is there in sixth position now from Damian Barris Haggart, Connor Leishman, Josh Agambar, and Macy Hitter. But Sonny Smith is currently at the top from Stephen Duncan in second place. And uh, Zach Drummond, the privateer, is in third overall at the moment from Ewan Charman, Henry Gregory, and for CHDD, it is Henry Engzederberg. And still the drivers jockey for position and jostle around, trying to get the advantage. Now, who's that falling back to the tail of the field? That is the 18 of Joshua Gambar for Cutting Edge Racing. He's decided he doesn't want to be in the mix. He wants to be chasing the pack. So he slips back into a tactical position to see if he can gain some more time by chasing his opposition rather than being in the gaggle of carts. So here they come again, looking really strong as they come through. Sonny Smith continues to lead the way. Ewan Charman second. Up to third comes Connor Leishman for Saltire Motorsports. Zach Drummond fourth. Then Duncan, Hitter, Tice Hurst, Engzederberg, Pirelli, Gregory and Barris Haggart. Eckberg is 12th from Agambar and Rudd. Then Lewis Islin, Ollie Handley, Thomas Behrman, Josh Patch and Bradley Bick. Rounding out the top 20, Jacob Gilman for the moment in front of Ollie Buckton, Oscar Sullivan, Dylan Mackay, Liam Hartley, Jack Thompson, Wesley Swain, uh, Sophie Kinghorn, Sonny Mortensen and Oliver Guyard with only three drivers having not set lap times and unlikely to compete this weekend. Owen Neve, Zico hopkins Collis, and Ollie Poole. But Sonny Smith is looking good for pole position at the moment. The final few seconds of the session. 
They're all going to come through together, and that will be that as far as their qualifying times are concerned. They won't get to set another time on the board. So now it's all about uh, getting the cart nicely stable and nicely set up in position. They will continue to push forward. They want to be in a good position as they come across the line this time by. So that is what they will achieve. They come through this time, and it is up to them to keep the uh, pace sky high across the line. And it is Ewan Charman second from Duncan. Hitter makes the progress. Henry Gregory up to seventh place. Sonny Smith has not improved on his final flying lap, but it looks okay to me for Sonny Smith to be pole position. Tom Behrman pulling off after his qualifying runs. And when you don't complete the final laps of qualifying, it makes big, big problems for you. Joshua Gambar has moved up to eighth place. So that tactical decision paid off brilliantly. He's now solidly in the top 10, but it's Sonny Smith in pole from Ewan Charman second, Stephen Duncan third from Connor Leishman, Macy Hitter, Zach Drummond and Henry Gregory, then Joshua Gambar, Damian Barris Haggart, and rounding out the top 10 is Jamie Pirelli from Blake Ticehurst, Eng Zederberg, Patch, Ekberg, Rudd, Mortensen, Kinghorn, Handley, Mackay, and rounding out the top 20 is Bradley Bick from Liam Hartley, Wesley Swain, Louis Islin, uh, Oliver Guyard, then Jacob Gilman, Oscar Sullivan, Tom Behrman, Oliver Buckton, uh, Jack Thompson, and then it is Neve Hopkins, Collison, Poole who did not start, so we assume that they are not competing after all. But a fantastic run from Sonny Smith. Yet again, he is in pole position, and that is absolutely terrific work from Sonny Smith. Pole position in both IAMI and Honda Cadet categories from time qualifying, and that is more than he ever could have expected. Absolutely terrific from Sonny Smith, and looking like he could be one of the stars of cadet racing in 2018 but there is still that second group to come so it's not nailed on yet for Sonny Smith because he still has to sit and wait to see what the second time qualifying group does his time at the moment is a 69.83 but that second group of drivers could well top him you don't forget how tough it was to beat Kia Nakamura Berta's time in the first place well Kia Nakamura Berta is back this could end up being a very interesting cadet season in both Hayami and Honda that could see, uh, basically, Sonny Smith and Kia Nakamura Berta battling for both titles and, man and many club events and the Nationals all season long. So it could be a really interesting season to see how those two battle away for supremacy in 2019. But in this second group, it's not just Kia Nakamura Berta who will be in the mix. It's also going to be Jack Clements, Reg Haywood, Mackenzie Douglas, Kasper Tomalewski, uh, Leon Frost, Ethan Simmons, Alfie Thompson, Aston Sharp, Noah Barham, and then Jack Hobson, Cruz Speakman, Connor Duncan, Miles Turnbull, Hayden Eldridge, Jack Plant, Mikey Porter, Devon Nolan, Ryotaru Sakai, Reese Lomax, Holly Woolley, Alexander Hawkett, Henry Jocelyn, Olivia Jenkins, uh, Joe Cheek, Danny Shields, Oscar Toyton, Jay Lawrence, Finley Whiting, Callum Gosh, Gustav Sosakovs, Aiden Evans, and Freddie Hull. So the second qualifying group for Honda Cadet is set to be uh, waved out onto the circuit once again. And we'll see them in fine fettle. Six minutes will tick away. And as we saw in the previous uh, time qualifying session, that won't give them a huge amount of time to do any uh, fast laps. They'll only really get four flying laps out of the session at best. And that means that they've got to get on with it pretty quickly. Honda Cadet obviously uh, backs to the walls. The Cadet classes actually don't spend as long uh, in terms of laps out on the circuit as the others do just uh, because of the pace of the cart. So you really have to be... Uh, at your very best right from the start. So these cadets really do have their work cut out for them. Here they come again. Green flags fly. And the Honda Cadets second time group comes out onto the circuit. Now to get pole position, the drivers will have to go faster than 69.83 seconds. And nobody got even close to that in the first time group. Charman was second from Duncan, Leishman, Hitter, Drummond and Gregory. But... Uh, Charman's time was a 1.10.49, and then Duncan was in the 1.11s. So Sonny Smith, uh, by far and away, the class of the field in that first sector of carts, but in that first group, I should say. But in the second category, it is going to be uh, very interesting to see uh, who comes through. There's a lot of the big names from Honda Cadet in this second group, and they will all want to topple Sonny Smith. But can they do so? That is the big question. So Kia Nakamura Berta running well. Thus far, there's only one DNS from the group. My apologies, make that two, and that is Jack Clements and Ethan Simmons. The only reason they would not be starting a uh, time qualifying group at this stage would be if they are not present. So uh, I can only assume that that is the case. 
and uh, Joe Cheek has yet to leave the uh, pit bay as well, according to the live timing screen, so I have a feeling it could well be he too who is sitting out of the action for this weekend. But now the flying laps are going to begin. For the record, uh, Jack Hobson comes straight out of the blocks with a 115.5, and he is fastest at the moment. But this is the final lap now that they are starting. So obviously it all comes down to these three or four time laps when they're out on circuit. They have got to put in the best possible performance they can as they come off of the bridge, down the back straight. You're obviously bleeding in the power now, going straight onto the top throttle. You've got to brake heavy for this first hairpin. Tight in, you want to hit the throttle halfway through the apex. You don't want to stay too close to the curbs. If you do, you're going to get spat out to the outside line, which is exactly what has happened there to the 77 of Oscar Toyton. He manages to get away without losing too much time. He would have lost a whisker at best, but so far so good for the drivers in Honda Cadet as they now come up to the S's, through to the left, through to the right. The dry line is still big enough for the Honda Cadets to really do something with it. But as they come up to the far side, it's going to be very interesting to see how the drivers battle through that particular section of the course. And as they come out of the Mike Wilson complex, they'll come into the S's, through the left, through the right, and out onto the main straight once again. Now we're going to see how the times will work out across the line. And so far, so good for Jack Hobson. He's done a, a 72-1-4, but it's not good enough to get him into the top 10. You've got to be in the 111s at least to get there. And Kian Nakamura Berta's first flying lap is good enough for 10th overall. So expect him to be chipping away at that mark over the course of the next three minutes. So Kian Nakamura Berta, fastest of all at this point. From Jack Hobson, Connor Duncan, Chris Speakman, Jack Plant, Oscar Toyton and Alfie Thompson. From Freddie Hull, Aidan Evans and Finley Whiting rounding up the top 10 of this second time qualifying group. Then Leon Frost from Reg Haywood, Danny Shields and Devon Nolan, Henry Jocelyn and Gustavs Usakovs, uh, Olivia Jackins, and then uh, Hayden Eldridge, Ryotaro Sakai, Callum Gosh, Alexander Hawkart, Jai Lawrence, Reese Lomax, Mackenzie Douglas and Mikey Porter. Then Kasper Tomalevsky, Aston Sharp, Miles Turnbull. And it looks like Joe, uh, Joe Cheek is out there, in fact. Holly Woolley's just gone up to 27th, in fact, ahead of Aston Sharp, Miles Turnbull and Joe Cheek. And then it's Noah Barham with only Jack Clements and Ethan Simmons not starting. So I can only assume they are elsewhere. So, out of the final turns once again. Kian Nakamura Berta chipping away at that advantage up at the sharp end. Uh, Jack Hobson goes third overall, in fact. Uh, fastest in this first time group. 111.10. So Jack Hobson's in the mix now. Jack Plant goes second. Kian Nakamura Berta goes second. And they are seventh and eighth overall. So we are definitely finding the time to compare with the first time group. Uh, Aidan Evans goes fourth in this time group. Not good enough to be in the top ten overall. Cruz Speakman fifth. Whiting is sixth from Toyton, Nolan, Duncan and Danny Shields. Uh, Reese Lomax and Reg Haywood come next from Jai Lawrence and Leon Frost. Then Henry Jocelyn, Callum Ghosh, uh, Alfie Thompson and Alex Hawcutt from Freddie Hull, Mackenzie Douglas and Ryotaro Sakai. And then Kasper Tomalevsky, Hayden Eldridge, Joe Cheek, uh, Mikey Porter, Gustav Osakovs, uh, Miles Turnbull, Olivia Jenkins, Noah Barham, Aston Sharp, and Holly Woolley. So they're running out of time. A minute 26 left on the clock. Yellow flags at the Litchfield Bridge. So somebody has gone off on the far side of the course. Can't quite see who that is from this point, And their cart is not moving. So I would suspect now the yellow flags have been withdrawn. So uh, it looks like we've got somebody moving rather slowly now coming up over the Litchfield Bridge. It's one of the Project One carts. I'll double check as they come down the back straight now because they will be directly in front of my line of vision. It is the 78 that went off. So that is Jai Lawrence, unfortunately, who was battling in the top 10 and has now not got enough time to get another fast lap in. That's a real shame for Jai Lawrence. His pace was pretty good. But uh, unfortunately, Jai Lawrence will now have to uh, suffer the ignominy of tumbling down the order. Kian Nakamura now second overall on a 110.06 and fastest in this time group. But can he find that elusive two tenths of a second? He's got to find it on this lap. He won't have time for another one. So it really is now or never for Kian Nakamura He and Sonny Smith could well be the two drivers who are battling for both of the titles in Cadet this season, Ayami and Honda, probably not just here either, but also potentially at national level too. So these two names are definitely going to be on everybody's lips this season. But the chequered flag is set to come down now. And as it does so, it's all about Kian Nakamura Berta, the number five. Can he beat Sonny Smith's time from the original time qualifying session?
We will find out as Jack Hobson goes second in the class and third overall. Gia Nakamura Berta, not enough. It is Sonny Smith in pole position for both cadet classes. Gia Nakamura Berta unable to improve in this second final, in this final lap of the second time group. So Sonny Smith on a 69.83 is the fastest Honda cadet here at BF International. Uh, so far from qualifying at least. Uh, then it is Nakamura Berta second from Jack Hobson who is second in the group. And then it is Jack Plant who's third in this time group. That's good enough for fifth overall. And then Duncan, Lomax, Whiting and Frost all managed to get into the top 10 with Duncan still there in 10th overall. And then behind Leon Frost, eighth in this time group is Aidan Evans ahead of Gruz, Speakman and Gustav Ozakov. Then Hayden Eldridge and Oscar Toyton, Henry Jocelyn and Alfie Thompson, Reg Hayward and Joe Cheek, Danny Shields and Mackenzie Douglas, Alexander Hawkut and Devon Nolan round out the top 20. From Ryotaru Sakai, Freddie Hull, Callum Ghosh, Olivia Jenkins, Jai Lawrence dropping to 25th from Kasper Tomalevsky, Mikey Porter, Miles Turnbull, Holly Woolley, Aston Sharp and Noah Barham. And the gap from the front to the back in this session is 5.68 seconds. Seven of the top 10 come from this second timed group, but none of them have beaten Sonny Smith. That's the important thing. Sonny Smith, pole position for both Ayami and Honda Cadet then after a stonking performance here on the second round of the Trent Valley Kart Club's Winter Series. We still have some time qualifying to come though. That's gonna come first of all from Senior X30 and then we'll finish up with Rotax Max and Rotax 177. Three classes to go of time qualifying here at Trent Valley Kart Club and it will be the Senior X30s that will come out on circuit. Several of the drivers that were here last time out in Senior X30 are not here this time as they are preparing for their European campaigns and uh, campaigns elsewhere. Harry Thompson was in the mix last time. He is not here, nor is Ben Barnicote, who of course is the reigning Grand Prix champion here on home turf at uh, Kart Masters, representing a big Barrett racing team wherever he runs. And uh, also you're not going to see the KR Sport pair of uh, Joe Turney and Clayton Ravenscroft, nor are you going to see Lewis Gilbert out there either. And that is because they are all preparing for action at uh, Valencia in the IAMI Winter Cup. However, you are going to see the hero of PF International, Oliver Hodgson, in the uh, Viral Art once again. He'll be out there, as will the O-Plate winner from last year, Thomas Turner. And this is almost certainly going to be a 2019 season that Thomas Turner can be very proud of indeed. Uh, spoke to him very briefly earlier this morning. He looks pumped up, fired up and ready to rock. So he could be a real gambit for the titles uh, in Senior X30 this season. And uh, it's definitely looking good for him at the Mark Litchfield Racing Squad. So they go down the back straight. It's Thomas Turner, Oliver Hodgson out there. So too Ewan Wilson, Jake Douglas, Mario Mills and Max Jean, uh, Archie Tillett, Alex Wang, uh, Matthew Hudson, Louis Westover, Thomas Hankins, Josh Graham, Thomas Wood, Finley Cross, Philip Rawson, Teddy Pritchard-Williams, Oliver Greetham, uh, Franz Fennick, and then Harry Torpy, Cole Kilner, uh, Gary Edwards, Cameron Coombs, Joe Reeve Smith, Louis Short, Rufus Hunt, Matthew Armstrong, Andrew Trevor, Harry Platten, Ben Hodge, Nathan Chafer, Alex Spinks, Tom Fleming, Lewis Thompson, and then the two Finns for Mark Litchfield Racing, Artur Salmeila and Emil Karjalainen. Now, I'm not sure what's happened to Charlie Webster for DB Motorsport. He's not come out onto the circuit for the first part of qualifying. So hopefully we'll see him out there uh, very shortly. I think we uh, do see him out there now, in fact. So as they come through to complete their first flying lap, all of the drivers are in the mix and they are starting to get some fast laps in the board. It's now about how fast can they get those carts up to speed in Senior X30 with the air temperature at four degrees Celsius, gray clouds overhead, the sun fading, but the track is still drying out, but I don't think it's gonna dry out much before we get the cold chill set in. So it could be another tough day at the office tomorrow, but we'll find out how it all fares. For the record, at the end of their first flying laps, Fraz Fennick is the fastest from Alex Wang, uh, Nathan Chafer, Harry Platten and Oliver Hodgson. Then it is Mario Mills from Ewan Wilson, Harry Torpy, Alex Spinks and Matthew Hudson in the top 10, just a whisker in front of Thomas Turner and Philip Rawson, but this is their first flying lap. So obviously those positions are going to change dramatically. Here they come over the line and Oliver Hodgson goes fastest. Rufus Hunt beats him. So does Cole Kilner, so does Matthew Hudson. So Hudson goes fastest of all. Matthew Hudson at the top of the moment on a 60.31.
from Cole Kilner and Finley Cross now up to third from Matthew Armstrong. Rufus Hunt up to second comes Harry Platten though. 0.26 of a deficit, so Hudson leads. Now up the top, it's Ewan Wilson. Ewan Wilson goes fastest of all, and Alex Wang goes second. Uh, then it is going to be Matthew Hudson in third from Harry Platten, Cole Kilner, Fraze Fennick. Uh, Archie Tell has gone sixth now. But incredibly, there is less than a second covering 19 carts. Wilson, Wang, Hudson, Platten, Kilner, Tillett, Fennick, Cross, Armstrong, Hunt, Greetham, and Turner. Then Mills, Westover, Wood, Hodgson, Thompson, Edwards, and Max Jean. Then it is Teddy Pritchard-Williams from Cameron Coombs and Phil Rawson, Harry Torpy, Jake Douglas, Joe Reeves-Smith, Emil Karjalainen, Louis Short, then Spinks, Hankins, Hodge, Chafer, Trevor, Salmela, Fleming, Graham, and Webster. There's nothing in it at the top as they come through again, and now we're in the 59s for the lap. Thomas Turner goes fastest, 59-3-8. Kilner now second from Westover. Armstrong is fourth in front of Phil Rawson for CRG. Then Oliver Greetham sixth for Lewis Thompson, Fraz Fennick, Gary Edwards, and Oliver Hodgson up to the top again comes the S8 Racing racer. Ewan Wilson on the Fullerton has gone fastest again. 59.29, nine hundredths of a second quicker than Thomas Turner, the O-plate. Third is Cole Kilner. Then it's Alex Wang, the Singaporean for Mick Barrett Racing. Louis Westover in fifth. Then Matthew Armstrong, Archie Tillett, Phil Rawson, Oliver Greetham, and Lewis Thompson. Lewis Thompson returning. So Lewis Thompson, of course, making his comeback to the PF International Club Series for the Jade Racing Team on the Birrell Art chassis. Running very well to start things off in the top 10 of this qualifying session. But Ewan Wilson leads the way from Turner, Hunt, Kilner up to the pole position as they come through. This time comes Thomas Turner. Gary Edwards to second. Greetham to second now for S8 Racing. Louis Westover goes second. Thompson now goes second, but wait for Ewan Wilson. He's usually the man to make the form book go up to the top. Wilson will come through shortly. And is this going to be pole? Yes, it is again. Ewan Wilson, 58-8-7. Turn a third. Wang comes back up to third position. The Singaporean is having a really good run. Alex Wang made the decision, of course, to come to British Motorsport to learn his craft. And I tell you what, this kid's got something magic. We have yet to see a Singaporean racing driver in Formula One in the modern era. But if anybody's going to get there, it will be Alex Wang. Under the tutelage of Mick Barrett Racing, of course, the team that has spurned two of this year's rookies in Formula One, Lando Norris and Alexander Albon. So out of the final turn comes the train once again. Oliver Hodgson trying to get to the top spot. He's just not got the pace at the moment. One more qualifying lap for him to go. Cole Kilner goes fastest in front of Wilson and Edwards. Then Thomas Turner, Armstrong and Wang, Westover, Thompson, Greetham and Hudson. So watch the second train of carts come through. Will Wilson regain his spot at the top? He has gone quickly, but not quick enough to beat his best. Kilner still there at the top. Wilson second now from the Mark Litchfield racing pair of Edwards and Turner. Then Armstrong, Alexander Wang, Louis Westover, Lewis Thompson. Fourth is now Archie Tillett. So for once, Archie Tillett is actually the faster of the two PFI drivers. Usually it's Oliver Hodgson at the top, but he's really struggling for pace. Only 14th at the moment, four tenths of a second back from Cole Kilner at the top. The checkered flag is poised to wave. And incredibly, there is less than a second now covering 31 carts, would you believe? Across the line, it is going to be tight. Kilner is still the top dog. Not for long, Turner and Hudson go faster. Edwards now second. It's an MLR 1-2. And Westover goes faster still. The Dan Holland racing driver gets a 58.56. But what can Ewan Wilson do? Can he get back to the top spot? Ewan Wilson comes through over the line now for the S8 racing team. Is there going to be a pole position for him? No, he's only eighth, would you believe? After all of that, Wilson led most of the qualifying session. And now he's only eighth. Make that ninth as Archie Tillett displaces him. Absolutely incredible. Half a second separates the top 12. Westover is pole. Louis Westover for Dan Holland Racing, his pole position. Absolutely amazing. Louis Westover from Thomas Turner and Gary Edwards. Matthew Hudson fourth from Archie Tillett and Cole Kilner. Harry Platten, Teddy Pritchard-Williams, Ewan Wilson and Oliver Greetham in the top 10. From Alex Wang, Thomas Fleming, Matthew Armstrong, Lewis Thompson, Tom Wood, Harry Torpy. Oliver Hodgson, 17th on the grid. Then it is Mario Mills, Joe Reeves-Smith, and Philip Rawson. 
Rufus Hunt will be 21st from Finn Cross and Josh Graham. Then Artu Salmela and Emil Karjalainen. Nothing to choose between the two Finns for MLR. Then Ben Hodge, Alex Spinks, Max Jean, Cameron Coombs, Louis Short, Franz Fennick, Nathan Chafer, Jake Douglas, Andrew Trevor, Charlie Webster, and Thomas Hankins. 1.6 covering them all. But Louis Westover, a very deserved pole position. I did say to him earlier today, how are you feeling, mate? He said, yep, this is my year. Last year was awful. I've got to make it count in 2019. So far, so good. Louis Westover for Dan Holland Racing, doing a grand job in qualifying there in Senior X30, and he goes pole. And, of course, he's one of the drivers who will be racing at the Valencia Winter Cup next week who elected to stay back and uh, do something at PF International this weekend. What a decision. Pole position from qualifying. So just two sessions left to go. Senior Rotax and then Senior Rotax 177. So it'll be interesting to see how those two classes finish up the action on track here today at PF International before our 33 race program tomorrow. Absolutely incredible. I'm not going to have any vocal cords left by uh, this time tomorrow night. But uh, fortunately, I will be joined in the commentary box tomorrow by at least one other accomplice, Kai Bacini. I'm sure we'll pop in for the Ayami Cadets, as he usually does. But uh, there is going to be some very entertaining races for all of the drivers out there this weekend. And uh, we're going to see some really great action. Uh, senior Rotax Max qualifying session comes next. Several drivers who have stepped out of juniors to move up to seniors, including three of the big names from last year's brigade. The battle between James Lowther and Guy Cunnington in juniors was legendary last year. They now bring that into seniors for 2019. And of course, you've got all of the regular guard of senior Rotax up at the top spot. Reese Hunter is the leading seed who is here, the number three for Dan Holland Racing, of course. And uh, James Lowther, Ben Burgess, Ari Barker, Tom Edmonds and Mackenzie Morris will join him in the field along with James Watson, Tom Walker, Louis Fleet, Dan Jones, George Smith, Anchi Stenning, James Lingard, Sam Sanders, Sam Stansbury, Ian Sisson, Sam Harrison, Teddy Clint, Joe Hunt, Alex Baker, Ben Donkin, Guy Cunnington, Harvey Edmondson, Lewis Halliday, Michael Roots, George Holbrook, Jody Newman, another one up from Juniors, Oakley Pryor, Travis Coyne, Kieran Gifford, Finley Sword, Lewis Smith, Daniel Yowd, and Matt Jones. So the drivers head out onto the circuit once again for Senior Rotax Max. It's been a very interesting uh, set of practice sessions for them as a few drivers are still trying to find their feet in the class, notably that trio of James Lau, the guy Cunnington and Oakley Pryor, who were so strong in juniors last time. They will want to continue on again uh, to find their feet this time. Now, we've got an oil flag on the exit of the Litchfield Bridge. So I wonder, is there rain starting to form on the circuit? We had snow this morning. It wasn't thick enough to settle, but we definitely had major snow uh, earlier today. But there is an oil flag down at the Litchfield Bridge, just under the Litchfield Bridge, in fact. There is an oil flag. So either somebody has broken down there and uh, that means, that obviously, that there's some fluid that's leaked out onto the circuit, or we're starting to get a change in the weather. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one, because these two sessions could well be transformed as a result of it. The Praga chassis of Sam Harrison comes through, though, to start this timed qualifying run. But the oil flags are definitely down up at the... Uh, Litchfield Bridge as they go through that long right-hander. And there are carts going off. One or two of them have gone for a spin. So clearly something has caused an issue there at the top of the hill underneath the Litchfield Bridge as they climb round the left-hander. So a couple of drivers got caught out at least. I'm not sure if it's more than two, but there were definitely a couple of drivers uh, having a bit of a spin. So I imagine somebody's had a bit of a difficulty from the previous session or maybe even from this one and uh, is not... Uh, has basically caused a bit of an issue for those two. The oil flags have now subsided, I guess. Uh, so, uh, yes, they have indeed subsided. So I'm assuming that means then that uh, we're not going to be too more troubled from it. Dan Jones, Ian Sisson, Harvey Edmondson, Oakley Pryor and Matt Jones not present from the original list. So they will continue another time. 60 seconds dead for pole position at the moment from Ben Donk in the privateer. Ahead of Reese Hunter, Ben Burgess, Sam Harrison, James Lowther in the top five immediately. James Lingard, 
And Guy Cunnington, seventh out of the blocks as well. From Travis Coyne, George Holbrook, and Angie Stenning. Then Tom Edmonds, Joe Hunt, George Smith, Lewis Smith, Sam Stansbury, Teddy Clinton, Dan Yowd, Finley Sword, Lewis Halliday, Sam Sanders, James Watson, and Tom Walker. From Ari Barker, and then Louis Fleet, Michael Roots, Jody Newman, Kieran Gifford, Mackenzie Morris, and Alexander Baker. Orange sky at night at PF International. It's a beautiful sunset at this point of proceedings as they continue to battle on an absolutely fantastic sky overlooking the PF International circuit at the end of what has been a very mixed bag of weather conditions here. But the time qualifying laps are still coming in. Sam Harrison in front of Guy Cunnington now. George Holbrook goes fastest. Reese Hunter, his teammate, nuts in behind, just two hundredths of a second slower. Holbrook, Hunter, Harrison, Cunnington, Burgess and Stenning. Then Lingard, Donkin, George Smith, Tom Edmonds, Alexander Baker and Kieran Gifford. Michael Roots up to 13th on the DSM machine. James Lowther now 14th from Sam Sanders. Uh, Lewis Smith, Travis Coyne, Teddy Clinton. And then it is Yowd, Barker, Hunt, Halliday, Stansbury, Walker, Watson, Fleet, Sword, Newman and Morris. Good to see so much of a battle from the drivers as they continue to push their way forward. Lots of great racing from the drivers as they uh, challenge their way further forward. There's going to be some amazing pictures of the uh, backdrop behind us, actually, from this uh, final pair of qualifying sessions. That really is an amazing shot. Uh, I, I have to say, look out for the social media pictures tonight from the various people at uh, TVKC. I know for a fact that David Manchester is getting some nice shots uh, overlooking the horizon. But out of the final turn, still some good laps coming in. Reese Hunter now goes fastest of all, a 58.58. A minute and a half to go, so still two qualifying laps of flying, running to run. Then James Lingard now second, Sam Harrison third from Lowther, Donkin, Holbrook, Cunnington, Gifford, Edmonds and Dan Yowd. Then it is Teddy Clinton in front of Angie Stenning, Ben Burgess and Lewis Halliday. And oh, a big problem for the 24, flying out of the pits, Dan Jones. And going straight on over the grass, clearly hoping that with one flying lap, he can get a decent lap time on the board. He's only going to get one flying lap. That's all he'll get from this qualifying session. So uh, it is going to be tough for him. But Reese Hunter leads by almost a quarter of a second with one flying lap of qualifying still to run. Ben Donkin now goes to the top at 58.57 in front of Reese Hunter. Cunnington comes up to third in front of Burgess, Thingard and Holbrook. Harrison seventh from Lowther, Stenning and Gifford. No change for Reese Hunter as he comes over the line. Gifford goes fourth. Edmonds now goes third ahead of Cunnington and Gifford. So Tom Edmonds comes up to third. Three hundredths of a second slower than the pole man. Donkin in first, Hunter in second, a hundredth of a second back from Donkin's pole time. And again, there is only a second covering 16 carts in senior Rotax. So a really close field, a really good battle. The final few seconds of the session as over the line goes the 24 of Dan Jones to start his one and only flying lap. There will be one more lap for Mackenzie Morris, but the checkered flag will come out now and the first man to receive it out of the final turn and over the start finish line is going to be the 44, the Praga chassis of Sam Harrison. He remains top 10 for the moment. Donkin does not improve. Cunnington does to third position. Reese Hunter goes to the top on a 58-3-1. Lingard second. Brilliant run for the pair of them there. And now Tom Edmonds comes up to second. 0.22 behind Reese Hunter. A hundredth of a second quicker than Lingard. Donkin is fourth. Cunnington is fifth from Holbrook. Gifford, Burgess and Lowther. Alex Baker now tenth from Sam Harrison. Teddy Clinton and Angie Stenning. Then it's Dan Yowd, Travis Coyne, Michael Root, 16th. From Sam Sanders, Lewis Smith, George Smith, Tom Walker, Lewis Halliday, Joe Hunt, Ari Barker, Sam Stansbury, James Watson, Louis Fleet, Jody Newman. Oh, no, Dan Jones has come across the line now, and it's 26th in front of Louis Fleet, Jody Newman, and Finley Sword. And Mackenzie Morris is 30th with no laps from Ian Sisson, Harvey Edmondson, Oakley Pryor, and Matt Jones. So we've got to assume that we've only got 30 drivers competing this weekend. And there's just time left for one more timed qualifying session. The last session before we go racing tomorrow. That's going to be very entertaining, really exciting stuff. And obviously it comes from the very strong contingent of Rotax 177 carts this weekend.
Many more Rotax 177 carts compared to what we had uh, last time out. There's a few more that have uh, joined the fray. Having seen uh, a few of them from last time, obviously there are now more to join the fray. Pole position last time in Rotax 177 was Luke Oliver, the Coles Racing driver from Ryslip. Uh, he just pipped Chris Thomas to the pole position on a 58.68 compared to Chris Thomas, who was a hundredth of a second off that. Adam Sadler was third from Joe Bleakley, James Beecroft and Dan Devereaux. But they all reckoned without the reigning national champion for persistence motorsport, Louis Large returns for the 2019 season as the rookie champion from last season in the National Brigade. And he is now hoping to make it back-to-back -back Rotax 177 titles. Also here this weekend, we should have Chris Wright for the TSI squad, Ian Branfield of Howarth Racing and uh, Charlie Whaley. We also have the former Birrell Art Elite driver, Char uh, Carl Churchill. Ethan Haynes and Aaron Yao should be joining the fray this weekend as well. I definitely saw uh, Aaron Yao uh, testing earlier this morning, the uh, number 74 for Howarth Racing from Barnstable. But the Rotax 177 is now green flagged and out onto the circuit. The final qualifying session of the day and of the weekend, of course, because tomorrow it's all about the racing. So through they come once more. In through the S's at the start of the lap. And under the Litchfield Bridge they will go. But a really exciting start. Whoops. Onto the grass for somebody coming out of the blocks. I think that was Aaron Yao who just went over onto the grass at the uh, start of his flying lap. As I think that was Ian Branfield leaving the pits a little way behind everybody else. Clearly his strategy is to chase the field. But the Rotax 177 contingent are out there once again. And they are led around at the moment by the 67 of Adam Sadler, who was third fastest in qualifying four weeks ago. Now, interestingly, the number two is falling straight back into position. Chris Thomas running under the KR Sport banner this weekend, according to the entry list. So uh, Chris Thomas will be there in position. And then, of course, Louis Large under the Persistence Motorsport banner. He'll once again be challenging Chris Thomas for honours in the 2019 championship season. So Sadler's first flying lap is a 64.67. That will be beaten, not just by him, but hopefully everybody else as well. But it's a good opening bank. And uh, the drivers now completing their first flying laps. So far, so good for Sadler. Joe Bleakley, Charlie Whaley, Carl Churchill, Chris Wright, Louis Large and Sean Smith come next from Tim Darlow, Luke Oliver and Ross Meakin. And then Rob Carter, Chris Thomas, Mark Wingad, John Scott, Will Davies, and Aaron Yao. Uh, Ian Branfield has just displaced Yao, though. So they are 16th and 17th to two Howarth Racing drivers. But there is more time to find. Four minutes and ten seconds remain on the clock as they come through in this final time qualifying session of the Trent Valley Kart Club's second round of the Winter Series for 2019. Four weeks ago, pole position went the way of Luke Oliver, of the Coles Racing Team. So let's see how fast we can go. 60.97 is the ideal fastest lap time. It's already been bettered by Adam Sadler, who's gone fastest in all three sectors. So let's see what happens next. Charlie Whaley goes second on a 61.84. And now comes the rest of the field. Louis Large goes second. Churchill goes fourth. Now Luke Oliver comes up to third in front of Ross Meakin. Charlie Whaley, Chris Thomas, Carl Churchill, and Chris Wright, with Sean Smith and Joe Bleakley in the top 10. Wingard unable quite to crack the top 10. He's 11th now from Carter and Scott. And then we should have the likes of Darlow. Up to 10th comes Aaron Yao. A very slow Will Davies comes over the line. So that lap wasn't a fast one. Neither will this one be because he's come across the line fairly slowly. So he's got to wait for the next flying lap to really get the most out of his cart. But uh, when you've got 17 carts on the grid in Rotax 177, pole position is not the be-all and end-all of your weekend and from 17th on the grid you can make a lot of progress in fact will davies for the racing perfection team on the viral art chassis is still checking his cart over down the back straight trying to get the best settings out of it maybe just, just making sure the engine is uh, giving him the output he needs but sadler goes fastest again a 60.33 a whisker ahead of joe bleakley chris thomas now goes second from right and then meekin joe bleakley fifth from luke oliver Charlie Whaley, Louis Large, Carl Churchill and Sean Smith, then Tim Darlow, Aaron Yao 12th, but up to 10th comes John Scott, so it's Sadler, Thomas, Wright, Meakin, Bleakley, Oliver, Whaley, Large, Churchill and Aaron Yao, then it is John Scott from Sean Smith, Tim Darlow, 
Mark Wingad, oh, Ian Branfield comes up to 11th place. So he is on the bottom of the top 10 then in 11th position. Adam Sadler, fastest of all in the second sector. So Sadler, Thomas, Wright, Meakin, Bleakley, Oliver, Whaley, Large, Churchill and Aaron Yao in the top 10 at the moment. From Branfield, Scott, Smith, Darlow, Wingad, Carter and Davies. But Adam Sadler comes through again. He gets under 60 seconds now. 59.87. Very good lap indeed. Can there be any more going under 60 seconds for the lap? Across the line comes Louis Large. Only seventh for him at the moment. Chris Thomas in second place. A minute and a half to go in the session. Sadler, Thomas, Wright, Meakin, Bleakley, Oliver and Large. And they are still jockeying for position at some parts of the circuit. Most of them, though, are looking for clear space to get the most out of their cart's horsepower. So they want to get some clean running in in the 177 Brigade. So they will come through the far side of the circuit. Adam Sadler, pole position thus far, now into the Mike Wilson complex. He's pulled way in front of everybody else and is the only driver out there to lap the PFI circuit this time qualifying session in under 60 seconds. So proof that Sadler is in the zone he wants to be and he'll only get one more flying lap. Across the line, and he goes faster still. 59.70. Now, interestingly, Chris Thomas is faster than him in both the first and second sector. Can he make it pole position as he comes across the line this time? Louis Large goes second. Thomas goes to the top. 59.62. So Chris Thomas is fastest in all three sectors. And that is going to be tough for Adam Sadler to beat. He's only down by eight hundredths of a second. But Sadler needs the perfect lap from his final flying lap to get pole position back off Chris Thomas. So Thomas, Sadler, Bleakley, Large, Wright, Luke Oliver, Meakin, Smith, Yao. It's not Yao anymore. It's his teammate Branfield up to ninth. Aaron Yao back down to 10th. In front of Whaley, Churchill, Darlow, Scott, Davies, Carter, and Mark Wingad. One second ago, checkered flag will fly this time by. Will Davies just managed to get in with one more flying lap to go. But the checkered flag flies this time for Sadler. Can he get pole position back again? Yes, he does. 59.37. That's a big gain. But can Chris Thomas do the same? Charlie Whaley goes up to seventh place on a 60.37. But can Chris Thomas get back on top once again? No, he can't. Adam Sadler snatches pole position back off Chris Thomas. Bleakley is third. Chris Wright is fourth from Louis Large and Luke Oliver. Charlie Whaley seventh. Ross Meakin is eighth. From Sean Smith in ninth place, will there be a change from the Hayworth Racing drivers in 10th and 11th at the moment? Branfield and Yao, they'll come through together. Yao has bailed out of the lap. What has Branfield done? He comes through now and goes up to 8th in front of Ross Meakin and Sean Smith. 11th then is Aaron Yao from Carl Churchill, then Tim Darlow, John Scott and Rob Carter. Will Davies is currently 16th, but he's the last one to cross the line. He goes into 16th still. Mark Wingard is 17th. So there we are. Rotax 177 brings to an end the time qualifying sessions from the second round of the 2019 Trent Valley Kart Club Winter Series. And it is going to be a very exciting battle in tomorrow's 2019 second round of the club championship in the Winter Stakes. We're really excited to see what will happen. Join us again. Bang on time. Live and early. We're hoping to run from 8.15 tomorrow. So it's going to be an 8 o'clock start time on the live coverage we hope and we'll see what happens with the weather tomorrow morning but it is going to be a very exciting day of racing 33 races across the uh, classes tomorrow we're really excited to see what's going to happen across junior x30 iami and honda cadet junior max mini max and junior tkm mini x30 senior x30 senior rotax and rotax 177 great racing to come i'm jake sanson hope you've enjoyed the coverage so far listen back to it if you're trackside on the spreaker application which is free to download to your apple and android phone and search for tvkc nice and easy to find uh, we'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 a.m it is going to be an absolute cracker of a race weekend hope you enjoy it and we'll see you once again same time tomorrow there is no terrible way to win there is only winning let me drive I won't make a fool out of you. Every one of us has to find a reason to do this. You do it because you're driven. I was beginning to think I'd never be anything more than a piston-happy, lead-foot punk. Then this starts to happen. Somebody put it in your mind you're going to be perfect every time out of your failure. Well, forget that.
Just forget it. You ready to put away your toys and grow up? Are you ready to make more money in one year than your father made in his whole life? Are you ready to become a real race car driver? When I won it was probably the last time I ever felt pure victory. Because I'm quicker than all of you. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. But hell, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's, it's like being knights. No pressure. Nobody breathing down my back, just driving because I love the pure. A lot of people go through life doing things badly. Racing is important to men who do it well. When you're racing, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. I just hope when you do, that I'm there to see it. Racing. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Win or lose, put up a show. Fine. And let's race. race.